morning, Guette Morga. Good morning. Hear me. Hey, good morning, Guette Morga, Lucas. Good Hi. morning, everybody. Hopefully, you can he hear and see us on this starting to be sunny, beautiful Friday morning in uh, in Zurich. We are back. It's 2022, the first Ask a Recruiter live session. Uh, I'm pumped. I'm psyched. I'm looking forward to this one. Um, and I'm here, as always, with Lucas Zender, the legend that is the rock star recruiter. How are you doing? How, yes, look, I'm doing fresh very good. Fresh from your trip from uh, Costa Rica. <laughs> yes, back from Costa Rica. It's been a great time there. Um, but now I'm happy to be back and have new sessions with you, Lee. That's great. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You look you look really fresh and and relaxed and uh, but I think you you always are. Well, right? well not so much. The chat lag is still there. I'm still stuff suffering from it. It's yeah. <laughs> still pretty okay. hard on me. The nights are um, short, but um yeah, the mood is very good. That's good to hear. That's yeah. good to hear. That's what we need for uh, for today's session. And mm -hmm. thanks everyone for for joining. Feel free to say hi in the comments. Let us know that you're um uh that you're listening in uh sebastian said our intro almost blew his eardrums <laughs> out but, yeah uh, so, uh, yeah Loud. okay <laughs> we'll, we'll work on the the volume of the sound um so today we are back in um with the ask a recruiter series and me and lucas we've actually been doing this for a long time but we we launched it as a series last year and this is where we engage with either job seekers and candidates on different topics around, uh, for example, their CV, interview techniques, salary negotiations, you know, challenging stuff um, to help the, the general community. And on the other side, we also have different sessions to help and engage with our recru recruiter community. So with recruiters, talent acquisition, uh, HR, and, you know, talking about uh, topics relevant for them. So this is, this is what today's session is about. Um, and uh, yeah, basically leveraging 24 or well, more than 24 years of recruitment in Switzerland from myself and uh, and Lucas. Uh, time flies when you're having fun, as they say. Um, <laughs> doesn't feel like a combined 24 years, and um, we're looking forward to to sharing with you for sure. Um, a quick plug on my yes. side. A very quick, cheeky one. I've just put into the chat our YouTube channel. You can see the previous Ask a Recruiter episodes as well as the other videos that we're doing. We're constantly uploading and uh, new content all the time. We're also refreshing uh, some of our content and putting it on there. Um, take a look, check it out. Do us a favor and subscribe. And let me tell you why. Right now, we are 30 subscribers. We only launched last week. Our goal this year is to reach 1,000 subscribers, and with a clear reason. When we do these live sessions uh, on LinkedIn, we also want to be able to broadcast live on YouTube, reach more people, help more people, and for that, we need 1,000 subscribers. So please do us a favor, um, go over to the channel, click subscribe. Uh, you can also see Lucas's uh, channel at the bottom of our channel as well as one of our kind of recommended channels to go to. Um, so it's a, for the German speakers out there, uh, go check out Lucas's channel. It has more than 1,400 subscribers, hundreds and hundreds of great videos and, and content as well. So go check it out. Um, so that's the plug. That's over. We can get into the, uh, into the session and, and into the details. Um, so today's session, episode five, and it's how to engage with candidates. Um, hot topic, important topic, especially with scarcity of talent, so hard to find candidates. So once you found them or whilst trying to get in, uh, get connected with them, in contact with them and, and the whole process thereafter. Um, as always, me and Lucas have questions lined up, uh, things that we've heard and been asked from, from other people. In an ideal world, though, we'd love to answer your questions. It's a live session. Please let us know what you'd like to know. What are your challenges around engaging with candidates? What would you like to hear our opinion on? And of course, as well, you're, there's many experienced recruiters and experts in the uh, watching. We want to hear your feedback on what we say as well. What is your viewpoint? What do you think? So please feel free to really engage with us today and this morning. And let's, uh, let's have some fun. Let's get it. So, all right, and thank you for the, the cool. stops. 
All right. So, I mean, um, whilst you are writing your questions in the in the comments, uh, let's jump straight in with the first one that we prepared just to get the topic rolling. Um, and that I pass over to you, Lucas. Um, what is what is candidate engagement to you? Yeah, thanks. Uh, I will immediately uh, try to put together my response, but maybe first we can say hi to many people uh -huh. here in the comments. Like, oh, okay. for example, I, yeah, I just had a look. We have uh, Elisaveta here, Dr. Alex Canis, Tapelo Rab Rabodiba, then Adriana Silva, Katerina Raimundo, Raphael Wolfensberger, Mikey McLean, love the name, <laughs> Mabel Afori, yeah, yeah. Sebastian Raudemacher, Kshiti Vajal, Jelena Pejevic, Lukas Dubs, hi Lukas, kennen wir natürlich gut. Ja, guten Morgen. Und äh, Katrina Maisberger, sehr schön, kennen wir yeah. natürlich auch sehr gut. Hey, okay. cool, hello. Hello, hey. everyone. That's yeah. nice. Good morning, good morning. And Lucia from Portugal as well. So thank you, everybody, for, for joining. Um, looking forward to, to today's session. Super nice. So, yeah, let's start with the topic. So what mm -hmm. is candidate engagement for me? It's... Um, it's a it's a pretty um, broad field to me. There's many aspects to it. Um, of course, it's the immediate communication that I have with the candidates when I'm talking to them, when I'm having the interview, the get together, the get to know each other. I think that's one of the most important parts and like also one of the most obvious ones. Mm -hmm. But uh, of course, it's not just that. It's also how you attract candidates, how candidates approach you. So it also has some aspects of branding to it or how you appear on the outside, how your mm -hmm. company appears and so on. It already starts there. And of mm -hmm. course, once uh, you have talked to the candidate, uh, everything that comes after that, like establishing a good relationship, invest uh, a long-term relationship and just keep connected and be a sparing partner for the candidate for a for a long long time so i think these are some of the main aspects that come to my mind when i hear about candidate engagement yeah. Yeah, I, I, what do I you think agree. Lee? yeah i absolutely agree i would add mm. you know it's the impression and perception that people have of you and your brand it's the commitment on both sides um it's the, the yeah the, the engagement together the communication and exchange from before they even know you or have that first connection all the way through to being part of your your network and and your uh, your community let's say um so it's really you know the the act of keeping the communication the flow and everything else uh, as as well so um maybe let's also add that all the questions that we have here now are also pointed to our um audience so Absolutely. if you want to answer the question as well let's say for example rahu salunke or um mabel of or whoever is looking or um lucas Dupes, feel free to also <laughs> answer these questions we were exactly. happy to read your answers yeah. in the comments exactly what what is what is candidate engagement to you did we miss something um let it let us know um all right so um what what forms of of engagement do you use what's your kind of go to mm -hmm. tools forms mm -hmm. so maybe if we start at the very beginning of that chain that we just discussed um, <laughs> maybe let's start with like the awareness like let's call it the brand awareness maybe it sounds a bit too marketing ish now but Anyway, um, I mean, it has something to do with it. And mm. maybe let's start with the awareness. And I think the most important thing at the very beginning of candidate engagement is to have a good, trustful brand that you mm -hmm. carry to the outside. So, for example, with Rockstar Recruiting, we are trying to establish that, you know, like mm -hmm. we are very close to the people, like on events or now we are specialized on um on techies so we go to the hackathons we are there we have you know like a little stand uh, like we talk to people we support them like um ex you know like right uh, right in the location and stuff mm -hmm. so this is very well received and we really try to build trust and be where our people are so i think that's um a very important form of the engagement that that you reach the people 
that you are looking for. So you have to have a nice brand and you mm -hmm. have to be uh, authentic, trustful, trustworthy, I mean, mm -hmm. and so forth. I think this mm -hmm. is a, a very important form of candidate engagement. All mm -hmm. starts with this. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's uh, um, it's kind of pre uh, pre engagement, or you know, it's it's about creating um, an awareness about your brand, about what you do before you've even maybe had that first exchange uh, with a candidate or with a client. You know, if if people already know what you do, or they've seen you, or you know, it's it's much easier when you reach out. You don't need to explain yourself, and uh, you're already kind of building that that perception and impression of you of your brand of and and then having that first uh, first engagement um so that's Julie, kind of really at, at the beginning yeah what forms do you use yeah i mean so obviously the the, the branding element for me is a huge part because I think I'm in one of the, the most challenging spaces to find candidates or to engage with candidates, to have that first mm -hmm. conversation with candidates, which is why I put out a lot of content. I try to really raise the awareness of, of recruiters, to raise the reputation. Um, so definitely the, the whole branding, social media, things like that. Um, I use WhatsApp a lot through communication. Mm -hmm. That's become a, a huge kind of go-to tool, I think, for, for many recruiters today. Um, and um, do things with with video, with with voice. We can talk a little bit about that. Uh, one of the other questions we have is about spicing up approach. So we, we can talk a bit more about that. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, you know, the, these are kind of some of the key uh, forms of engagement that, that I use. And I'm, I'm surprised sometimes the amount of recruiters and companies out there who are doing zero on, on social media, on going to local fairs and exhibitions, like you say, you know, creating mm -hmm. a presence and awareness. Um, I think there's a huge amount of talent to be won and attracted for, for the companies and recruiters mm. who are doing it. This is super important. Yeah. And I think I cannot really tell you now how to do it, but I also see a lot of companies, in my view, doing it wrong. So they mm -hmm. kind of try to, you know, like, um, paint the picture of their company that is mm -hmm. very um künstlich you know yeah, it's artificial. not like the real deal it's artificial exactly yeah. thank you mm -hmm. and it doesn't look like you know like like the true you know like the true uh, just like the truth it's just it's just mm. very artificial and it's like we are very diverse and we have flat hierarchies and like mm -hmm. teamwork is written in capital letters here and to me this sounds a bit like bullshit because we all know reality is not like that. As soon as we start working there, we will have maybe a challenging boss, diversity mm. whatsoever. It only yeah, exists yeah. maybe in a nice catalog of words, you know, it will mm. never be like that. And I think many um, companies that try to do, you know, like nice talent um, acquisition or um, uh, trying, they are, they are trying to attract talent they are going down that line that they are like superficial about um, their or artificial about their marketing and i think mm -hmm. uh, this is not what uh, the candidate is looking for he's really like looking for the authentic style the no bullshit style look mm -hmm. this is what we do we don't have to you know like use superlatives or anything this is what we do this is what you get when you work with us we are here for you. That's it. I think yeah. that's the honest um, way to go. And yeah. candidates really appreciate that, that absolutely. style. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think mm -hmm. it's, it's extremely, uh, extremely important. Um, there's a couple of comments and questions come in. So I'm just going to kind of bring them into the, into the feed. So um, I think that was from uh, Lucas, but he obviously has some privacy uh, <laughs> settings set up. Um, but yeah, talking about candidate engagement, you know, how and where to approach the people you reach out to, uh, build personal rapport and trust, you know, basically genuinely listen and care about the candidates' needs and, and desires. And I think mm -hmm. uh, um, I think that's, that's a really important starting point. You know, if if oh you, yes, if you. In order to build the rapport and trust that Lucas is talking about, you do you have to be genuine, you have to be authentic, and you have to come from a point of wanting to help and really being open to listen and learn and 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 take the time, uh, as opposed to you know just as get through the call as quickly as possible and just get out of the call or, co yeah. or connecting what you want, right? 
absolutely agree. I mean, this is also what I believe, you know, like in the war for talents market. So where you have like experts that are super rare and everybody mm -hmm. wants them, especially mm -hmm. let's say in software engineering or software development, mm -hmm. but also in other fields where you just need, you know, like that one expert. I mean, I think recruiters that have, you know, like those strong KPIs, like let's have mm -hmm. 50 calls a day, let's, mm -hmm. um, send out 100 LinkedIn messages a day, I mean, they will have no chance uh, mm -hmm. anymore because you will not get to these people. What these yeah. people are looking for is like a true relationship, a true mm -hmm. sparing partner that can accompany them for a very long time. And yeah. if you're a KPI driven, you have no place anymore in this market. Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. this is also what Lucas Stoops is pointing out here how important it is especially nowadays in the war for talent you have to establish a human relationship mm -hmm. not just a uh yeah not just the artificial one but a human relationship yeah. yeah yeah absolutely absolutely so thanks a lot lucas for the uh uh for the comment um sebastian said that his understanding of engagement is um <clears throat> typically been distinct from relations so basically mm -hmm. the, the former refers to communications with talent I'm familiar with your brand and the latter the candidates already in your pool. Um, so um, basically saying that engagement is with people who, who um, don't know you. And then it's, and then it moves into a relationship. Um, yes. Yeah. So I, I, true. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. It's, it's, it's a good point, Sebastian. I think, you know, the, the point is once you've engaged with that person, then hopefully they're in, as you say, they're in your relationship, uh, they're in the, your, your network, uh, you have a relationship with that person. But I think that also goes on beyond uh, a recruitment process. What happens then afterwards? How do you engage with that person after that kind of initial yes. intent relationship of a recruitment yes. process has happened? Um, yes. But uh, it's it's really uh, good good points uh, good points there from uh, Sebastian. Um, okay, so um, Mabel uh, comes in and says as well they're looking for genuine human connection, and I think it comes back. To I, other yeah, I mean I absolutely love this comment from Mabel because mm -hmm. I think uh, within the war for talents market, within the experts market you will not be successful if you have like an algorithm or a tool like a, mm. a machine learning tool that is like detecting candidates um you know like because of certain keywords and then like automatically sending them messages mm -hmm. and stuff this will not be successful uh, mm. i think the people will be successful that um manage to establish a genuine human connection to these experts and this is something we cannot automate it's like no. pure empathy pure um, social skill and uh, no. which is also very nice nowadays because um everybody's talking about ai and how this will replace everything but it's not true in that field i i don't see it coming Listen, I remember, I think it was probably five, six years ago or even even long, everyone was talking about AI and recruitment and, you know, how it's going to completely take over. And, you know, yes. people were, were, were making ridiculous claims saying, hey, AI is going to going to basically take our jobs. You know, recruiters won't be won't be needed anymore. And the amount of even, even myself receiving um, automated messages from companies where I'm clearly not the right candidate or clearly so not the stupid, right person, uh, So stupid. So stupid. In companies, I mean, I've, I've recently been been uh, approached for a <laughs> like almost let's say a junior recruiter, so a yeah. one year experience recruiter from one of the up and coming local digital brands in regards to to recruitment, um, and the message came actually from their I think it was from their COO. Holy so basically, God. some some recruiter has has programmed or, or done you know this thing on behalf of the COO. Um, and they've basically spammed every recruiter on the market. Um, it's horrible really for his reputation too. Absolutely, and and as I say, yeah. this is like a you know somebody who's growing crazy at the moment. You know, they've yeah. been in the news and things like that about what a fantastic you know platform and this and that. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, okay, but where's the where's the human interaction? Where's the 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 personalization? You know, the, I I do not have any fear that the um, robots will replace uh, replace us and you know what Mabel as well and, and, and Lucas I heard one one quote recently um I think it was from uh Dalton Doherty a, a rector in in the UK 
Um, and his his comment as well was that um, uh, for recruiters to uh, for for robots to replace replace recruiters, hiring managers need to work out what it is they actually want. Yeah, and until, that happens, <laughs> until that happens, we're fine. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. We're safe. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, uh, let's yeah. See, let's see. Um, I don't, I don't want to laugh, but I cannot hold it back. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can't tell me I'm wrong. Huh? Until that happens, I think we're we're doing fine. Yeah, yeah. Doing fine. Um, so um, also from Lucas, well, <laughs> quite a big one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, again, genuine long-term uh, mm -hmm. approach. Um, yeah. Also offering various channels, uh, Calendly links. Um, mm -hmm you know, where people can just click, book themselves in, it's automated. I mean, things like this are really, uh, really good. Um, good yeah. Um, and um, again, talking about standing out from the usual Nullach mm Fumsen, -hmm. so, you know, be different. Yeah. Um, personalize. Yeah. Personalize and read every single profile, refer to specific parts, be funny, be genuine, and try a bit of nerd humor. And I think nerd humor, yeah. for sure, is is something that that I think uh, can can work in the in the techie space. Um, but you know, <laughs> yeah. that, that, that that brings me to our next question, which I'd love to ask you. Um, and I think that Luke has just touched on a few of those things as well. Um, how do you spice up an approach? How do you make it more engaging? I think this is this is one that I hear. Uh, I was speaking to a recruiter um, earlier this week when I asked for what would you like us to answer on the on the session for you as a as a recruiter. What's interesting for you? And they said, I'd really like to understand how do you spice up an approach? You know, how do you make it more engaging? Um, and I think the problem today is that so many people. Google how to approach a candidate or they get a training. And what does the training say? Hey, you know, compliment them on their career, mention a couple of things and then tell them what you want. Um, so if everyone's doing that, there's no individuality. There's no, you know, so so I don't know. I mean, tell me, what, what do you do? Um, so the comment of Lucas Toops, I really, really like. Um, mm. These are some of my um, receipts as well. Like, uh, mm. I'm also a big fan of nerd humor. <laughs> so let's say, for example, if I have um, the first video call with, mm -hmm. um, with a candidate um, mm -hmm. and I have, for example, this is my mug. It's a Star Wars mug. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And uh, I have stuff like that on my table or in the background. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this is such an easy icebreaker. Mm -hmm. Because everybody knows, you know, like Star Wars somehow, or um, mm -hmm. when I'm at home, I have a guitar, you know, in my background, yeah, yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, you have one too. And, you, you know, this it. is such an easy icebreaker. And what mm -hmm. I do is I don't start, you know, like directly with hard facts. I just go like, mm -hmm. hey, how are you? Maybe we can talk about Star Wars. There was just a new series out lately. We can discuss that. <laughs> I just go easy on topics and I just uh, show to the other person that I'm just a normal guy uh, mm -hmm. because I'm a recruiter. That doesn't mean anything right now. We're just mm -hmm. like, this is you, this is me. We are having a nice talk together. Mm -hmm. We are having fun. Of course, mm -hmm. if I have another guy who is just like all about yes and no, and mm -hmm. it's not really, you know, like, then uh, I'm not trying to, you know, like force him to have like a, a great conversation about the world mm -hmm. with me then I, I can adapt, of course. But mm -hmm. most of the people, I would say 90%, just on top of my mind now, they really like just a funny, cool, nice conversation. They just like to feel good. And I think yeah. one of the most important things when talking to candidates is make them feel good, you know? Mm -hmm. And when they feel good, they start to trust you. And then you have the commitment. And then they like it when you reach out to them because mm -hmm. every time Lee's reaching out to them, it's something cool, even mm -hmm. if it's a rejection. See, yeah. they, they know Lee's a guy I can trust or Lucas is a guy that I can trust mm -hmm. and he has news for me and they will uh, be responsive and so on because they like you, they feel good when communicating, when interacting with you. So mm -hmm. this is for me a way to spice it up use mm -hmm. stuff like this be mm -hmm. funny talk about different things not only about the hard facts mm -hmm. and you you would do that also in the initial approach to somebody so not i mean obviously you're talking about when you get someone on a video and and this is mm -hmm. you know absolutely a, a uh, icebreakers i see uh lucia mentioned uh, marvel is her icebreaker <laughs> 
Um, I think you would have a friend in Katrina. It's a good one too. Exactly. Yeah. You'd have a friend in Katrina there, Lucia. Um, and um, yeah, I think, uh, but but would you also do that in a kind of first approach in the, whether it's through LinkedIn or other channels, email, do you also bring in this this humor, that those elements in there? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, and I refer again to the comment of Lucas Dupes, mm -hmm. personalize. Mm -hmm. Every mm -hmm. and each message I send out, be it on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. be it on a messenger, be it uh, mm -hmm. on email, what, whatsoever, I mm -hmm. always personalize, always. And if mm -hmm. I know something about the person, I mm -hmm. will, in what way, it can be very direct, it can be a yeah. bit indirect, whatsoever, I will somehow put that in there yeah. so yeah i mean we have the the same question uh, or similar point uh, adriana uh, thanks a lot for the for the question again she, she's kind of now pointing us pointing us to the this kind of first stage approach okay so like uh, you're sending a message on linkedin um mm -hmm. and um yeah basically how uh, how would you how would you do that um i mean f i think for me a lot comes to, and it's something I discussed. Um, there was a live session I did, I think it's on the YouTube channel as well, uh, with uh, Sophia, which was all about uh, um, kind of approaching candidates, hyper personalization. I think that was a, a word that she used a lot in the conversation hyper personalization, making things so specific that it's clear that it could not be written for anybody else but you. Um, I think humor is a great way um to 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 also uh, bring things in um and if you think if, if it, you're reaching out to a, a top talent that person probably also has three four five to ten different recruiters in at any one time reaching out to them as well so how do you do something different um i want to actually just share with you if if i may i need to see if i i I, I, I thought this uh, might come up or might be one of the, the elements. Let me share something uh, with you about how I like to do it because I like to use videos and I think it's an underrated element um, because when you talk about being funny, being authentic, being genuine, what's more genuine than, than showing yourself and talking in that way, right? Um, and let me just show you if I can bring it in here. Uh, hopefully the quality is... Um, <laughs> good enough and there i took uh took a trick that i saw from a uh i think it was a company um a video company in the uk um and i wrote to uh jasmine at the time um i think i have about 20 connections uh, who are called jasmine so <laughs> the identity is is safe um but basically you can see on there it says jasmine press play now what what human being has the ability to not press play when they see something so hyper personalized that's just for you your name is on it you're too curious everyone's going to press play <laughs> right i mean that's that's just my my opinion um and and from there then you can really capture somebody and you can get a response and which is what you want half the time we pro we recruiters don't get a response from a candidate but if you've gone to the effort to make a video and that was just on my mobile phone um just to get them to come back just to get that first engagement to get the conversation going and from there everything else can be can be easy and you can also see uh, the very first thing they they say there wow surely we can have a conversation <laughs> um so I mean, that's, that's definitely one of the things that, that I love to kind of bring in first stage. I connect on LinkedIn, I do it without a message, um, and then I come in and bring something unique because I think most people could say they don't have it. Now, not everyone wants to do a video, so it doesn't have to be a video. It can be a voice message, perhaps. Um, but I think it comes back to what Lucas said as well, being real, being authentic, bring humor in everyone likes to laugh everyone likes to smile and you'll get a much better response in my in my opinion love it very cool cool approach with the video mm -hmm. yeah I've, I've done it done it a few times yeah. um, and it almost always works you know um so hopefully adrian that, that gives you a bit of a uh, an idea as well so i think we go back hyper personalization make it unique uh bring some humor in maybe a voice maybe a video um maybe you share a, a um 
an interesting link to something that you that you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots of different ways that you can uh, you can do. Yeah, that. just yeah. try to make it look not generic. Like yeah. I have written a message now to Adriana, so mm -hmm. so to speak. And it's not a it's not a copy paste thing, and mm -hmm. the way you do that with the video, of course, is very personal. And yeah, I'm not I'm not surprised that it works well. Also because yeah, it... you look very handsome. <laughs> I, uh, well, I, I don't know about that. But I mean, uh, but I, I try. <laughs> I try. Um, you, you're gonna yeah. make me blush, Lucas. But um, no, I, I think um, yeah, I, I think it's also yeah, just just trying different things. Um, trying different things. And if you hyper-personalize, if you take that amount of effort to reach out to a great candidate, then you don't need to reach out to 100 candidates. Talking about KPI, Lucas, before. You exactly. Know, you don't need to reach out to 100 because your hit rate of, I reach out to you, I get a response, we have an engagement, that's going to be much higher. Um, yeah. So, True. okay. So hopefully, Adriana, that uh, answers uh, the question. Yeah, she said, hey, thank you. Super cool idea. I hope you try it. Try it, try it once, see if it works. Uh, it's very easy. You can buy these little whiteboards that I had. Uh, it costs like 10, 10 bucks or something like that. You change the name each time, hyper-personalization. Um, cool, okay. So guys, let us know your, your questions. What else would you, would you like to know? Um, and I think um, yeah, one of the things that we had as well, um, Another question we had is, what do you do when you're being ghosted by a candidate? Does it happen to you? Um, it happens rarely. Okay. But um, it happened more often like a um, couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. I think um, I have developed some strategies mm -hmm. uh, so that um, uh, I got better at this topic. <laughs> Okay. So, so what did I change? Hmm. So first, I mean, you can try to call the candidate. Mm -hmm. I mean, just just try to reach him over another channel. So if mm -hmm. you have always um, like communicated over WhatsApp, call him up. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very it's very obvious. I think everyone does yeah. that. And then you can try to maybe send him an email or like a LinkedIn message. What I do, I if I really want something from him, I spam him. I don't feel bad about that. I send him messages on LinkedIn. I send him an email. I send him a WhatsApp and I call him. And mm -hmm. uh, I say, hey, I'm really looking for you. Where are you? <laughs> yeah. And um, if that doesn't work, sometimes um, I ask um, a coworker, a team colleague, if she or he would call the guy yeah. up. And uh, then mostly, um, yeah, we reach him. But mm -hmm. uh, I think more important would be what to do to not get ghosted mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that that case doesn't you know like almost to none um uh come up you know mm -hmm. like uh, well i think for that you need to understand the main reason why people ghost right yes and i would argue that people ghost because they don't know how to communicate where they are in that moment. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is perhaps they're not ready to continue in the process. Perhaps they're not ready to accept an offer. Something has changed with them. Maybe their priority has changed towards another yes. process. That's yes. probably the biggest reason. So priorities have changed. Another, exactly. But but towards I have another position I'm interviewing for. So I'm gonna put my my focus on that. I'm just mm -hmm. gonna try and delay as much as possible uh, yes. with with uh, with Lee or with Lucas or you know, whoever whoever you're working together with. So I think if we talk about a strategy to try and avoid it, I think it's about that communication during the process to say to a candidate, um, look, it's fine if you have other priorities. But if I'm not aware of it, you know, um, I exactly. can't manage my client, my process in the best best way for you. Um, but also, it comes back to that whole rapport, transparency, the relationship you build up. If you build a genuine connection with the person, um, you know, I, I very rarely, almost never have a situation where I don't know what the other opportunities are that a candidate is interviewing for. Yes. Right. 
because I built a level of trust where they can say, yeah, actually, I'm interviewing also at this company. And yes. it's really cool. I like this, this, and this. It gives me yes. a chance to 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 sell and pitch it, pitch against it and to understand, okay, what's the difference compared to my clients' opportunities? It allows me to advise my clients, hey, we need to do this, or this is this is something that he has in a or she has in another process. We need to adapt a, a bit towards that. Um, but but you can only do that if you have the engagement, if you have the commitment, if you build the rapport, you know. Um I think that's the main reason why yes. people go. Absolutely. And also you mentioned that you like to use WhatsApp mm -hmm. in the beginning of our session. And so do I. Yeah. I love to use the messengers. Mm -hmm. And why? Because it's very easy to respond. Mm -hmm. And um, you can also establish a culture of communication. Like, yeah. hey, here's a little message. Thanks for your response. And mm -hmm. they kind of get used to respond to you immediately. Mm -hmm. and. This is uh, this is great. Since yeah. uh, I have started to use messaging systems, mm -hmm. I have almost no ghostings anymore. Yeah. Really, almost no ghostings anymore. Yeah. So uh, it works very very well yeah. because you kind of establish like a little social contract mm -hmm. uh, with the people, and mm -hmm. um, this works very very well. Yeah, and you can also send a voice or video message through that. Yes. Yes, exactly. With a very yeah. kind of heartfelt, hey, listen, it's fine if your priorities are changed, but please let yeah. me know. Because yeah. at the moment, the only assumption I can make is you're no yeah. longer interested. And yeah. I do not know what to say to my client right now. Exactly. So this works very well. If you if you go like, hey, I'm going to suffer if you are not going to answer now. Yeah. This works very, very good. Yeah. And another thing that works is if you like straight on point, like the very first sentence, yeah. Go like, are you having another process? Yeah. I need to know. You mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. go out, you know, with what you really think, like yeah. directly. So these two work very, very well also if uh, you are being mm -hmm. ghosted by someone. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Hey, so um, let's see if we have uh, maybe there's some other questions coming from the uh, viewers, please let us know what else would you like to know? What other questions uh, can we answer for you? Um, let us know what you would like. We have some more questions here uh, as well. Um, what about uh, something I'd like to ask you as well? It's not about ghosting, but it's about reapproaching candidates. Um, if you have approached somebody once, twice even, you know, where do you go from there? How do you, how do you reapproach? What do you do? Um, I usually reapproach my candidates regularly. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I mean, if you're, not even, getting a, if you're not getting a response. So you've never spoken you to You mean in general? Uh, so yeah, in general, you, you reach out to mm -hmm. somebody, yes. you've not responded, you tried a couple of times, never. Ah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they haven't responded, and then mm -hmm. after a couple of time, I have an opportunity for them, and then I reach out to them again. Do you mean this? Yeah, let's let's say you either let's say you have an opportunity. You found the candidate mm -hmm. that you want. You reach out to them. You mm -hmm. hear nothing back. Yeah. You try a second time. Nothing. Okay. No. Well, very easy. If I have an opportunity, I just uh, send him an email like "Hi X Y, mm -hmm. I had to think of you again because of this." Mm -hmm. Okay. link to the opportunity whatsoever and then i ask him something like um, what do you think about it how do you want mm -hmm. to proceed something like that best mm -hmm. lucas so okay. very short and simple don't want to waste mm -hmm. his time because for a certain reason he stopped uh, texting or writing me back then mm -hmm. so i don't want to waste his time i just mm -hmm. you know like really straight on send him the opportunity if he or she likes the opportunity he or she mm -hmm. will respond yeah yeah okay yeah you? Um, hold on one second. I think our session just died. No, seems good. Um, oh, I just need to check. <laughs> Are we still on? Moment. Everybody's still yeah, here. Yeah, uh, let, let us know if you Hello. can still see us. I know that um, somebody mentioned that they, they got disconnected, um, mm -hmm. but I just got disconnected now. So I hope. Uh, oh, and also my thing saying we're having uh, trouble streaming to LinkedIn. It may be an issue at LinkedIn. It's, side so oh, okay. uh, let's just see can you still see and hear us let's 
Uh, still see the stream. Let me just ask people now to see mm -hmm. if they can still see it. Um, apologies for any technical issues that, that LinkedIn are uh, having right now. Let's just see. Yeah, okay, we're still good. Um, perfect. Uh, sorry, that that distracted me. Um, so yeah, the reapproach of, of of candidates. So I think you know these these are good points. Keep it quick and simple. Um, I always like to say, okay, chop, chop and change it. If you try it through LinkedIn, find their email, write an email. If you try it as a text, maybe send a video, send a voice message, do something different from what you did uh, did the first time. I'm a fan, as, as you know from before, about the videos because I think it's like it's like um, with WhatsApp. It's very easy. Uh, we hear sometimes about cyberbullying and these kind of. It's very easy to say something or to tell someone something negative in a, in a message, and it's much harder when you see the person and have them visually. So I think that that you know doing a video, making a voice message, um, can also break a little bit the barriers and, and as a as a reapproach. And as I'm recruiting recruiters. Um, I have no shame in saying, "Hey, persistence is is one of the best attributes you can have in the, in our in our business." So that's why you know attempt number three. You know, make a bit of joke out of it, have a bit of fun, and hopefully you you catch their attention as well. Okay, um, so yeah, looks like subtitles only. So I think hopefully most people can still uh, can still see us. Um, so Luke has asked another question as well. Uh, mm -hmm. How to be personal without having to rewrite every message from scratch? Um, ah, yeah, so here's here's a tool that uh, Lucas recommends for our recruiter, recruiters watching, Typenator. Um, mm -hmm. You can add your own individual uh, touch to message templates. So you can kind of set some key, key binds in your keyboard to say, hey, bump, add that one into LinkedIn or into my email um, and can basically structure uh, what comes across as a very personalized uh, message. And then you can really just add the, the hyper personalization without having to do it all uh, all from scratch. So I think that's a, a great bit of uh, uh, a great bit of advice uh, from Lucas. So those recruiters who don't know it, uh, Typenator, um, it's it's an app. Um, you can, I'm just gonna put it as well, Typenator into the chat. Um, you can create your own templates, make your own messages. You have a key bind where you do, for example, control whatever, and that populates into LinkedIn, into your email, and then you just need to hyper-personalize the, the, the elements to really connect with the people. Um, so that's a great bit of advice. Thank you, uh, Lucas, for that. Um, nice. So let's see. Um, Yeah, uh, Sebastian said another problem can be that emails end up in, in spam or junk for some re reason. Uh, no rhyme or reason, no logic to that. Um, this, this, this can happen, which is why also it's good to try in different ways other than just email. Uh, if you yeah, haven't that's heard that. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Um, some recruiters like to use an um, uh, email tracking um, tool which allows you to see if the email's actually been seen, which can be really helpful. If you send an email to a candidate saying, hey, we'd like to have a conversation, uh, it's ideal if you know that they have read it or not. And if they haven't read it, it's a very high, highly, uh, very high probability that the email has ended up in their spam. And I recommend then trying in, in different ways as well. So, yeah. Okay, good. Um, so other questions um, from the community, don't let us know if you have every, uh, other things. Let me go through what we have as well. Um, this is a, a one that I had also from, from Lisa at the time um, about how, to, how do you keep candidates engaged even if there's no news or positions available? So let's say you mm -hmm. either you have a candidate in process, but you still haven't got feedback from the, from the client, but you need to communicate to keep them engaged, um, mm -hmm. or you don't have any positions available and you don't just want to not communicate with them. You want to keep them engaged. Do you have any uh, tips and tricks, any go-to yeah. things? Uh, yeah, I do, I do this a lot, actually, mm -hmm. because for me, I don't see... It has to do with the human, with the genuine human relationship. I don't see why I only have to talk or communicate with the candidate when I have something for them. I mean, 
I don't want to say these are my friends, okay? That would mm -hmm. be too far. But I mean, it's people within my professional network. And mm -hmm. why should I not take care of my network? I mean, mm -hmm. I just shoot them a message from time to time. Like, hey, how are you doing? Or mm -hmm. now when I'm back from Costa Rica, I have some nice animal videos, believe me. Mm -hmm. And some of my, <laughs> you know, like... Um, some of my uh, candidates, I have sent them an animal video. It was like, hey, yeah. I'm back from holiday. So this is a nice little squirrel monkey. I thought you would enjoy that. Uh, <laughs> if, uh, you know, I, I mentioned the Star Wars series before. It was Boba yeah. Fett, the book of Boba Fett. It just ended mm -hmm. uh, this week. Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. I go to my Star Wars um, candidates and I'm going, hey, did you like the end of the series? I mean, yeah, yeah. why not doing that? This is very yeah. human, and it makes uh, it makes the candidates like me, and of course, mm -hmm. I like them too. And it's just mm -hmm. nice talking about Star Wars, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, what's so bad about it? And this is how I do it. I mean, I don't yeah. always have to have an opportunity to have mm -hmm. a reason to get in touch with a human being. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and I think it's also. Um, uh, it's also a way to be successful in our job mm -hmm. to do that. But it's not think, my first motivation. It's like the I first motivation is to have a good network. I think that's um, obviously uh, you have a lot of experience in recruitment. Um, you have a lot of interest in things that you can pick up on and you're obviously you're engaging with your candidates to get this information out. <laughs> um, what about if you are a young less experienced recruiter or a talent acquisition expert, you have maybe one or two years, perhaps you don't have yet that life experience or experience in, in recruitment to kind of build rapport on that level. And then you, you don't have this information about the candidate. Um, what would you recommend to somebody like that? It depends on the office that you work in and the working mm -hmm. culture. If you are in a 100% strictly KPI driven environment, then it's, mm. there's almost no chance to do that. Mm. I mean, then you just keep on doing it, mm -hmm. what you have to do for mm -hmm. two years, and then you leave. Yeah. <laughs> this, this would be my advice. I mean, it's good, you know, like to learn mm -hmm. the basics. And it's also nice maybe to learn like work, you know, like very hard mm -hmm. and to have this experience, it's very good. But mm -hmm. um, one day you have to leave that environment. But um, mm -hmm. But if you have an environment where there is space for you to also mm -hmm. implement the personal style and mm -hmm. develop your personal style, then I don't see um, I don't see any connection to age or to experience. Mm -hmm. You can start immediately talking to people. So mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. that's how I think yeah. about it. Okay. What do you think? Um, yeah, I, I think I think it comes back to a little bit about how we as recruiters, as internal recruitment experts, HR, I think it's about the, on one side, the the, the tools, and we talked about automation and, and things like that, but actually just the structure and the process that we have. I think if I asked in, in the chat, how many of you actually in the chat, sorry, I, I, I spend too much time gaming and also with my son, I'm thinking about the, the chat as opposed to the comments. Um, so, so basically, I think um, if if you think about the, um, the the process and the steps along the way, how many people uh, watching right now have a clear kind of step one, step two, step three? Meaning, okay, the candidate is with us. Um, we're in touch with them. We've engaged with them. Um, let's say the, the the position didn't work out, um, and you, your your relationship in that moment stops. How many people have either an automated structure or something which says, okay, the next step is four weeks later, we say, hey, we haven't forgotten you. Um, you know, here, uh, we don't have another position right now, but we haven't forgotten you. We're keeping you in mind. Hey, did you see this article about, you know, X, Y, Z? It's really good. Check it out. Step two, another four weeks later, you know, okay, something similar, a value add, some, some, some something that, that appeals the, the, is is giving something to them like i think we would probably say i think everyone would probably say no we don't have anything there's no structure or thing <laughs> way and reminder and set up to to continuously engage and offer things to our candidates that's why for me these live sessions the posts i make the this, this is kind of what i feel i'm adding as a value and and, and bringing things to to my community and to my candidates and my network um 
But I think I think that there's a problem in recruitment that we simply don't have these tools and structures and reminders and things where we just can constantly have these touch points with our candidates. I don't know. Yes. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's very good if you can establish a structure that keeps you reminding, you know, like to uh, to keep in touch with the candidates. I really, really like yeah. this. Another yeah. question is just how you do it then, you mm. know? Is yeah, there like a standardized yeah. email that gets, mm -hmm. you know, like sent out? Then I don't think that's mm -hmm. the right way to do it. I will still yeah. like try to keep it as personal as possible because yeah. there is where the magic is. But uh, to have the structure that keeps you like reminding, hey, yeah. reach out to the candidate again after some time. I think mm -hmm. that's very good and worth establishing. Yeah. Um, Lisa said as well, couldn't it be seen as stalking? <laughs> um, yeah, may maybe. Depends on, on how much you, uh, how often you approach. And, and I think, no, because it's it's going to be based on how you do it. I think... Um, Absolutely. No news to a candidate is news. And I think that's the most important thing we as recruiters, talent acquisition experts, HR need to remember. No news is still news for, for a candidate who's sitting there waiting sure. what's happening uh, with their process. Yeah. And if you can share an article, if you can just catch up and, and it comes back to also setting expectations. I try when I speak with a candidate or when I close that, okay, we don't have anything right now. I always say to somebody, hey, it could be something comes up tomorrow and it could also be two months without hearing from mm. me that, that I don't have anything just to let you know and to ask the question, how, yeah. how often do you want to be in contact? Should I give you a call in four weeks just as a quick catch up? Because then you're setting the 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 kind of reason for your call then you call in four weeks hey how's it going you know i said four weeks ago i would um call you you're being a great recruiter because you're following up on your promise that you made to them they know why you're calling it's a quick and easy catch up and it takes a lot of the awkwardness out of the call i would say yeah absolutely uh, yeah. and i mean uh, regarding the stalking, this really depends on your personal style. Mm -hmm. she, she, it's, actually, she means on the social media. Uh -huh. So stalking on social media. You mean with the posts and things? Uh, if, 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 Lisa, if you mean yeah. with the amount of posts and content that you put out, um, I think that I would say um, too much content or over-posting over, uh, over content for me mm -hmm is only if the content itself is not good and not relevant. Mm -hmm. You know, if some if you're able to give advice and insights and tips to somebody, whether it's three times a week or three times a day, that information is still relevant and still useful. If you're putting out content and stuff just for the sake of doing it, that's stalking. I don't know. Maybe you disagree. Me or Elisa? Um, either, either or, either or. Um, I do agree. <laughs> exactly. Um, so a couple more comments. Um, Lucas said regarding ghosting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. He's ghosting. basically saying he remembers them in the future and won't offer them the best possible opportunities. Uh, if they don't give, show the respect or meet him or don't reply or, or things like that, good luck to them. I yeah, that. that's absolutely fair. Absolutely mm. fair. I mean, if you mm. ghost someone, you have to be aware of the consequences. They yeah. will not probably not like you so much anymore. Mm -hmm. And maybe they have the greatest job on their table for you ever. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. will never know about that because mm -hmm. you ghosted them like for mm -hmm. no obvious reason. And uh, that's a very good point. I really yeah. like it. Yeah, be I, aware I if you're stuck ghosting. We're all human. We all we all have different hard times, challenging times. Not sure what to do mm. situations. Um, yeah, but I, I I don't I don't blame you for having that feeling. I mm. see actually I've, I've taken Lisa's con uh, comment out of context. So let's see what Christoph said. Um, mm -hmm. So he, um, thanks for the comment, Christoph. He said social media gives you the chance to basically, as Lisa said, stalk the person, see yeah. what they like to do, I understand, um, bond with the candidate. Mm. Uh, I, I don't think this is this is stalking. Um, I think it's part of our job as a detective <laughs> recruiter to find out as much as possible to be able to engage with that person as possible. That's that's my belief, um, and it's it's something that we can use to our advantage. I don't know. What what, what do you think? I think um, I understand the point of uh, of Elisa. Um, it can. Be re uh, received as stalking. If I have something on my Facebook 
let's uh, let's say i know facebook is public if you put it public and so on okay mm -hmm. we all know that but mm -hmm. it doesn't change anything if mm -hmm. i have something on my facebook and then a recruiter sends me a message and refers to a picture i posted there i would be like this is a creep <laughs> and um so it's very important to uh, be distinct about direct and indirect if mm -hmm. i see that he's a big football fan let's say you yeah. are a fan of manchester united mm -hmm. maybe i would use a football mat mat metaphor in yeah. my message but i would not go like oh i see you on facebook you are a menu fan yeah. that's that's creepy and yeah. i would never do that i would be very you know slight and you know like very yeah. um, enough, Deutsch, um, yeah. um Subtle. subtle i would be subtle, subtle about it and yeah, use yeah. it in an indirect matter but not mm -hmm. in a direct one yeah yeah no i i absolutely agree i think uh, yeah anyway, don't be creepy nobody don't be creepy no, nobody appreciates yeah. a creepy uh recruiter um and uh but, but don't be a creep i think yeah. we've had that before don't be a creep <laughs> don't be a creep we, i think we had don't that in one creep. of the other sessions yeah but we, but we need to, as recruiters to use all information that we can find on the internet to our advantage to to attract to engage and connect with the best talent and if it's out there that it's out there for everybody to see you know i, I read something or heard something uh, some weeks ago saying where somebody said it's not okay for a company to google a person and look at their social presence before hiring them um i think you'll probably split a room 50% will say it's not okay and 50% says it's it's public. Sorry, can you repeat that? I I'm I, sure I saw something I... a few weeks ago on on mm -hmm. on the news uh, on mm -hmm. on LinkedIn which said uh, someone saying it's not okay for a company or a future employer to google a, a future employee. Ah, oh, okay. And then go onto their social links and see, you know, what they're doing, oh. what they're posting, <laughs> what their, what their their image is. And I say I think you'll split a room. 50% will say it's uh it's 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 fine it's out there it's public and the other 50 percent would say it's stalking it's not okay i would just leave that room because the question is completely irrelevant yeah they will do it anyway so yeah. this is like who cares if it's okay or not they will yeah. do it so yeah. nobody asks if it's okay or not the mm. the question is what do you do with it as a recruiter mm. what do you do with it as a candidate that's the only thing that matters absolutely absolutely <laughs> um on that note lucas the hour is almost up um it's okay a lot of fun. thank you uh, so much to everybody for watching um we have to wrap it up now because otherwise my kids will be hungry and or oh. hungry um as they come home from from school they will eat and, you alive absolutely <laughs> absolutely um but it's been an absolute blast as always lucas my guest thank you so much or my co-host i should say not my guest in in these series um thank you everybody for your input for your messages especially those who, who posted a lot thank yeah. you lucas um elisa lucas the, yeah thanks yeah, so exactly. much elisa, Sebastian. also uh, adriana everybody mabel. mabel yeah for turning up for posting for sharing um wishing everybody a beautiful sunny day enjoy the weekend uh go out there engage with your candidates uh, engage with us engage with my youtube channel subscribe um and uh, we see you all on the other side for the next uh, for the next may the session. force be with you may the force be with you <laughs> exactly hey thanks so much everybody Jones weekend eh? ciao ciao bye-bye